guys, what's up guys, it's Mike Chimomo here and welcome to my YouTube channel and most of all welcome to episode 23 of my Gothic 3 playthrough. In this episode I will be going and uh, explore a bit. I'm going to go to this area over here, kill a couple of critters to level as well as visit a small cave which, if I remember correctly, has a druid stone. It must be somewhere around here. I'm not 100% sure if it will be here. But I'm gonna check this road out, nevertheless. You know. And, uh, afterwards I will teleport. Well, first get this island over here for... Where is the Guru quest? Um, the first book. Then teleport to Braga to get the second book. Teleport back to Braga to go to Morasu. So without further ado guys, let's begin. Come on Silvio, we've got some hunting to do. We are the chosen people. Wealth for us, dominion for Beliar, and his dominion will come. And then those who have drawn his wrath shall tremble. So pay with your gold, else you shall pay with your blood. Beliar knows no mercy. There is no pity for the weak, only pain and death. Now let's hope that the druid stone of the lurk is indeed in one of those caves. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, if it, there is indeed a lurker st stone, druid stone, somewhere hidden in the caves, which I know for a fact there is, um, then, you know, I will need them to get them, because this is uh, the servant of Adanos and thus it's my duty to uh, get all the druid stones. Let me first get myself a companion. You showed him! May the worms eat you! Beasts are a bit of a nuisance. But I mostly go here for uh, the little amount of XP that I get. Um, but uh, I will kill the orcs if they're red. But I want to test something out before I actually go to Nortmar, which requires me to have 75% reputation with the orcs. Just to check to make sure that the uh, orcs remained red named um, because if that isn't the case then things might change a bit may the worms eat you because normally as a uh, servant of Adenos I would uh, liberate the s areas of Nortmar of all the orcs because of their red name. Now, I'm not entirely sure, but I think I already tested a couple of times. But I keep forgetting the result. That uh, what happens if you get 75% reputation and then go to Nortmar with <laughs> the orcs? You showed him! <laughs> Because if, if it does, you know, then uh, it could mean some new quests, different side quests, you know.
May the worms eat you. But I mostly do this for the XP because uh, I am far away from getting max build. Still need one level in two handed. Um, I still need. Well, let me check. Alright, so I still need this one. Large weapon number three. I still need Orc Slayer and Regeneration if it is possible. It could be that it's for only the Paladin slash, let's say, Orcs, then I can't get it as a Shishin. But if it is possible on all three parts, I would get it on all three parts because of its top-notch use. Um, Orc Hunter I still need, but that I can only learn in Nordmar as far as I know. I have to get the Water Mage Robe and Mana Regeneration. Um, and Forge Weapons of iron ore, pure iron ore, well pure magic ore and improve heavy armors and then I need these two still uh, and these four. I will not get these two because of uh, magical capabilities then I still need to get these two. This one I can learn somewhere with one of the alchemists in Muratana and this one I can learn in Nordmar and then poison resistance I must also learn. And after that, I have to get these as well. So it's going to require quite some levels before I'm actually, you know, full build-ish. But we will get there. You showed him! These beasts are a bit of a nuisance. Just a tiny bit. Because that's also one of the main reasons why I decided to do the Path of Adonis first is uh, due to the fact one it's my favorite playthrough and uh, second it allows me to test certain things of which I'm uncertain before I make those decisions in the wrong decisions in the particular playthrough you know. <coughs> <coughs> eat you. Worms eat you. Now, if I spot the cave before we're gonna get across any orcs, then there's no need for me to go through the lines of the orcs. Because if they are 
capable of turning from red to let's say green because of orc reputation then they might reveal some extra quests which I must complete as a human orc mercenary you know the closer I get to a hundred percent with the orcs the better but sometimes you have to make uh, decisions that divide everything thought for a second my game was gonna crash a good thing it didn't I thought there was a cave here Was it this cave? I'm not sure, but uh, I will check it out nevertheless. There was a cave here, I think it's a bit further that way. But uh, if this is the cave, then we're pretty much done here. One way to find out. I don't think it is. But nevertheless, still gonna lose it. Yes, it is. It is the right cave. supposed to be lying there hmm there's nothing here to pick up normally there would be can't break that open so I was pretty sure it was that why is it in here? Because this cave does look familiar. No druid stone though. I was pretty sure it was this cave. But there's nothing here, so... It must be in some other location. It could be that, uh... Because I used the community patch, you know, it has been transferred to somewhere else. I don't know. But, uh, I could recall that this was... Well, no, not this. The hut up here was the uh, area where you could find the druid stone, um, especially in vanilla gothic 3. That's a little hut over here, well hut-ish. It could be that I'm in totally in the wrong cave, but uh, everything looks as I remember it vaguely, but nothing here, so... I could go through here, you know, and continue my search a bit more. But, uh... Yeah, why not? There will be mages, though. I hate mages. Oh, seriously, I can't let him go back.
Oh, that's uh, intriguing. Well, this this is this was the cave that I really wanted to check out since I checked it out, and uh, it basically has nothing. Um, might as well go back, you know. Go back now. The only downside is I cannot teleport back. Well, I can, but then he will be waiting around here. Oh, give shit. Wait here. Sure. Goodbye. Now, if I remember correctly, as soon as I take a uh, different companion, which will be Diego when I go to Morasu, as soon as I take another companion, he will go start walking back automatically, as far as I know. If not, then I'll uh, let him stand there and have his fun. But uh, let's go. Um, I'm not quite sure if I can cave can handle all the undead on that island so I will skip that island for now which is this island it has a uh, one of the chests which could contain rare items but uh, I'm not here for the rare items I'm here for where's the guru book I will check that island once I have liberated the desert and have all the time in the world to explore a bit and as well the capabilities of doing so. But where is the Guru's quest? So I must do that one. Now make sure you are well repaired because uh, you will have to fight quite some trick, uh, quite a nice amount of critters. You will find the first book where's of where is the guru on the last island. I will complete all the islands, you know, just as a mere, let's say, um, as a mere backup for when I need to heal or whatever, you know. But you don't have to clear all the areas if you don't want to. You know, that's entirely up to you, but I will do so. So let's save. Normally I would check the entire path, but uh, you know, that cave was exactly the cave I was looking for and uh, it disappointed me because of the fact it didn't got a druid stone of the lurker. So now I wonder... <coughs> Respond. Good say. Good thing I saved. But maybe it's quest related. I don't know.
Just give me a sec to get something to drink. Alright, so here we go again. I could have researched it beforehand, you know, but I prefer to know things out of the bare of my mind. But I am pretty sure that was indeed a lurker stone. Cause, um, you know, in vanilla gothic there are six animal forms. Six. Six as in a number of their gods, I don't know. <coughs> the wolf, the boar, the snapper, the shadow beast, and the lurker. And then you have also have the a lizard. Maybe the lizard was the sixth one. But uh there should be seven in total. But uh you know Joe Wood Productions have that, you know, let's say issues with the fact that if they do not like certain quests to be functioning relatively quickly before release date you know they will scratch it just you know let's keep it in the game but they scratch it and the lurker stone was one of those um just like in gothic one they had that uh, quite often you know unfinished quests that were in some way connected to you know quests related things you know like the uh the chest in <coughs> the valley of mines with the uh between the monastery and the guard house where um, what was his name again gomez was chilling at that chest was inaccessible to open because it was quest related but the key never got implemented or the quests you know never got finished and which is a shame you know but understandable as well you know but uh, these things quite happen often in Joe Wood's career especially because I mean look at Forsaken Gods it was the part that was intentionally intended for Gothic 3 itself you know you go to the mountains with Zardas but instead of the get the games ends it continues but they scratch that because of the fact that they wanted to release gothic on the exact date on the exact date that they wanted to have it you know released so they cut forsaken gods out of it and make a, a DLC from it but truth be told you know Forsaken Gods is not a DLC it is the just like a fall of Satyrif you know Gothic 3 finish at some point and Forsaken Gods continue on that point if you're saying that it is a, a DLC it means something like let's say Gothic 2 Night of the Raven you know if you want to play a Gothic 2 a Night of the Raven with your old character which has 
hasn't had let's say Night of the Raven on it then you have to restart the new game in order to get Night of the Raven you know playable that is a DLC it connects the missing dots to the in-game fragments that were already there Forsaken Gods, if you press New Game, it's not gonna ask, you know, do you want to first play Gothic 3? No, 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 you start as in Forsaken Gods, you went with Zardas to the tower, you know, to the mountains, figured out that the war was not problems of the gods, but of the orcs and mankind alike. <coughs> because even if the gods were defeated, which was done multiple times, first the Sleeper, then the Undead Dragon, and then the, um, what was the last Impossible. one, last one again, the Undead Dragon, and this one we have to kill Khan, King Robar, and Zubin, you know, and still, man and orc alike wage war upon one another, because it's not the gods that affect those influence, it's that they use the power of gods to further their own agenda. You know, it's all about power, it's all about control. And Forsaken Gods continue upon the fact, you know, that you go with Zardis into the mountains. <coughs> you, you stay in the mountains for a period of time. And you figure out that the gods, you know, were not the problem. Because even if after you left them in total peace, you know, they are still, once again, waging war upon one another. <coughs> and when I first played Gothic 3, and I noticed that the game had multiple endings, you know, the Paladin's ending, well, the Rebel ending, the Hashishin ending, and the Orc ending, as well as Zardes' ending, I was like, hmm, interesting, you know. <coughs> But when I beat the game, I had this, you know, gut feeling that something was missing, something... <coughs> well, let me first take care of these, uh, annoying little blood flies. <coughs> Where do they all look pop up from? But, you know, something wasn't feeling like the game was complete, you know. Um, I'm pretty sure that most people that played Gothic 3 and then played Forsaken Gods had exactly the same. Um, because when they released Forsaken Gods, I was like, hmm, a DLC for Gothic 3, nice. And I played it, and I was like, hmm, why is it the DLC while it's an entirely different game, for one, you know, it's the, for two. It was the missing part of Gothic 3, which instantly would have felt and made Gothic 3 whole, you know. Um, if they really implanted it as a DLC, it would have been a great <coughs> impact <coughs> to the Gothic franchise than it does when it did with now with Forsaken Gods. A lot of people are mad about Forsaken Gods and we're very, very disappointed with Forsaken Gods. I, myself, had the same. You know, I was relatively disappointed with Forsaken Gods. Why? Well, because one, it was the missing part of Gothic 3, so it should have been implanted with Gothic 3. Two, um, they, you know, even though uh, I do not know if it was Piranha Bytes or Deep Silver said, you know, the game is not ready to be published yet because of missing content, thus Forsaken Gods. And the other part was like, no, you know, release it. We have to release it and we have to release it now. So they made that mistake. And people became mad, you know, Gothic 3 Forsaken Gods 
Gothic 4 and Gothic 4 Fall of Sacherif have destroyed the entire series in an instant. In an instant. And most people that play the Gothic series despise Gothic 3 Forsaken Gods. They despise Gothic 4 and they despise Gothic 4 for say, uh, Fall of Satyrif. But that's because the developers were stupid to uh, do it this way instead of, Gold of uh, Gothic 2. Gold Edition with Night of the Raven. You know, if they'd done it that way with both Gothic 3 with Forsaken Gods, but start of Gothic 3. Legitimate Gothic 3, you know, this beginning that I had. Um, and with a Gothic 4 Fall of Satyrif, they would have had a way more happier community. Now, I myself am not a really big fan of a Gothic 3 Forsaken Gods, Gothic 4, and a Gothic 4 Fall of Satyrif. But I will still, you know, record them, upload them, why? Because they belong to the series. Whether I like them or not, you know, is beside the point. They do connect, you know, which is one of the strong points that Joe Productions have with their Gothic games. Is that it makes sense. You know, despite their loose parts of each other, you know, despite all that, they do fit. The puzzle fits, you know, so I have to give them credit for that. However, you know, uh, stop uh, doing those uh, so-called DLCs that are entirely different beginnings than the original game, you know. God, uh, why, why did they call Gothic 3 Forsaken Gods? Because officially it was the missing part of Gothic 3, which was not ready at that time you know, to be released. And they did it again with Gothic 4 Arcania and Follow Satyrif. Same thing. You know, it's uh, Forsaken Gods all over again. It's like they want to cash in money for DLC that what's already supposed to be in the game, anyways. You know, but that's not the reason. <sighs> They released the games because they promised those games to be released at that specific time, at that specific date, and they wanted to do that no matter what. But if they would have extended that a bit, and said, hey guys, we are adding DLC for you guys to it, but we have to make it, you know, compatible to one another, so if you start Forsaken Gods, you start in Gothic 3, and not in Gothic 3 Forsaken Gods, you know. But they didn't. And uh, a lot of people are pissed about that, and a lot of the Gothic fans will not play Gothic 3 Forsaken Gods, Gothic 4, or Gothic 4 Follow Satyrith for those exact reasons. But, like I said, you know, I'm not a big fan of them either. Um, I was more disappointed about Gothic 4 than a Gothic 3 Forsaken Gods, and trust me, I was majorly disappointed about Gothic 3 Forsaken Gods. Not because it was bad, but because of the fact that they didn't implant it that to Gothic 3's original game because you noticed, you noticed instantly that it was missing content, you know. You noticed those things. Especially as a uh, Relatively hardcore a gothic fan, you know. What the hell? 
hell? I know, I hope that they are not gonna make the same mistake with Elix. Because that is something I'm really, really afraid of. I've looked a bit of Elix here and there, you know, saw a couple of videos from YouTubers that I follow, you know. And it looks, you know, okay, but, uh, you know, impression is always better if you play the game yourself, or worse, you know, it could go both ways. But I really hope that they will not get DLCs like, let's say, a Gothic 3 with Forsaken Gods and Gothic 4 with Fall of Satyria, because if they do do it that way, they're screwing themselves. Because people are not gonna take it for much longer. You know, people will not keep saying, okay, okay, I'll buy the game, okay, okay, I'll buy the DLC. If they know in their mind that it was originally supposed to be in the original game itself. I hope they learned from it, you know. Um, but it doesn't matter. In the end of the end, in the end of the day, I support Joe Wood Productions, Perenabytes, Deep Silver, all the way. You know why? Because their games, uh, despite their minor difficulty, minor issues, despite all that, their games are gold. You know, it's not for a reason that lately more and more people are starting to play a Gothic 3, for example. You know, people were like, hmm, Gothic 3 was nice, but Gothic 3 is a, a shit compared to Gothic 2 and Gothic 1. Sure, the games, you know, are smaller, the Gothic 1 and Gothic 2. The graphics are not all that great, but um, that's because they're released earlier than Gothic 3, because Gothic 1 and Gothic 2 are by far, by far better than a Gothic 3, Gothic 3 Forsaken Gods, all the way to Gothic 4 Fall of Satyrif. And the most terrifying and the most terrible Gothic game in the entire series is Gothic 4, hands down. Um, when I first played Gothic 4, I beat it the game in like 10 hours. 10 hours. First playthrough. Of course, I skipped quite a lot, you know, but still, 10 hours. No skipping conversations, etc. No, no, no. Just 10 hours. So, uh, with all the conversations, let's say about 7 hours, you know, if I would skip them all, all those conversations, then it would have been taking me about 7 hours worth of gameplay. Maybe even more, or less, you know. But it was relatively disappointing. But, I was still gonna play it, you know. Whether I like it or not, it belongs in the series, and uh, since I'm doing a series let's play as well, two flies and one stone, might as well do those as well, you know. But the reason why I still like the Gothic 3, the reason why I still like Gothic 3 Forsaken Gods, Gothic 4 and Gothic 4 is Fall of the Satyrith, is because of the series is a gold in general, you know. The in-game lore is connectable from the first game all the way to the last. You can connect the dots relatively easily, 
you know, if you listen very closely to the conversations, to the in-game lore about the gods, etc. You know, you know that they fit the dots. They fit together as one giant puzzle, which it's supposed to be as a series. So I have to give them credit for that one. And it's because of the games like Gothic that we have games like The Witcher, that we have games like those, you know, because uh, Gothic really did send a trend, especially in uh, Russia, uh, Germany, Poland, and those countries, you know, uh, Czech Republic even, I think. Um, Gothic is not that well known here in the Netherlands, for example, but the people that do know the games uh, love them most of the time, you know. 9 out of 10. And those that don't, you know, have their own opinions about it, because that's the beauty of our nature, you know. We all have our different opinions, we all have our different beliefs, and you can agree with me, you can disagree, but it's your perspective, my perspective. <coughs> It's a good thing that we don't all share the same mindset, you know. <coughs> Would have been boring and we all were exactly the same. This is the first chest of where is the guru? Alright, so now we have to go to Braga. Let me first get the book before I'm gonna get Diego. Here is the cave, it's uh, normally guarded with two ogres. I already killed them um, with Diego on my way to... Uh, what was the city's name? Benigrai. And you will find the second chest. The Book Slayer, Adonis's Tears. Let's see what that is. Alright, so if you are low on, uh, let's say, mana, HP, and your stamina is empty, eat this and it will be filled 100% instantly. Not all that great, you know. But uh, those were the. Uh, where is the guru books in the desert? The other two are 
one of them is in Silden, between Silden and the North Marian Pass. You know, I will get that once I go from fairing to arena fighting, get the Orc Command outfit, and I will also get that book. Because then I will go to, you know, North Mar afterwards, pretty much. Um, to, to check something out if the Orcs there are green or red named. Complete the quests either way, you know. Um, and the last, where is the Guru book? We will find it in Nordmar. So, those will be completed in different settings, you know, different episodes. But in the desert, we've got the two Guru books, so we're done with that one. So, let's teleport back to Braga and get Diego as my companion. Where's Diego? Oh well. I don't know where Diego is, but he's certainly not in Braga. But anyways, guys. This is about the uh, end of this episode. In the next episode, we're gonna go to Morasul, become champion of Morasul, complete all the quests there, so that I am ready in the desert for now. Um, mm, yeah, and Morasul. Afterwards, I will go quickly to Faring to get the armors of the orcs, and uh, you know, go and probably probably liberate Varent um, before I will go to Nordmar. I'm not quite 100% sure about that one just yet. Um, it could be that I wait with it just a bit. Um, I'm still not you know not sure about whether I will do it instantly afterwards but in the next episode nevertheless we're gonna do more Asul and after that I will see whether I will start liberating these cities of the desert or first go to Faring, compete in the arena, become champion of Faring, meet Khan and uh, you know, get my Orc Commander armor before I will go to Nordmar and get Where's the Guru in Murtana book, you know. So anyways guys, I hope you like what you see, feel free to subscribe to my channel if you do hit the notification and uh, feel free to like, thumbs up or thumbs down, both are welcome, you know, whatever you deem worthy of giving this video uh, that you know it's entirely up to you positive or negative comments all are welcome any kind of feedback is very much appreciated and as always guys i hope to see you next time in the episode of morasul so uh, see you next time guys